In this episode of Stream Robot Bytes, Death Counter across all games. Current deaths for the current and total games. And also, addition of deaths and removal of deaths for the current game. Hello, and welcome to Stream Robot Bytes where I cover how to set up and to make the most of the awesome stream robot. There is one video per topic to make it easy as possible to follow and find. When relevant, sample import code will be provided to make it even easier to get started and to add functionality to your stream. Let's get started with the topic for this video. The improved death counter does need a bit of configuration. It's very simple and uh, it won't take a more than a minute or two to do so. So let's walk through what's needed to import and configure the death counter. As with any other example, we can import the string from the description below. And it's picked up the three actions there to import. We're going to leave those all selected and import. Now it's really important that we configure these before before we assign commands. And all we need to configure is the top line in each of these actions. And it's simply to change the default value from my name to your own Twitch account. So we need to go through these one at a time, changing the first line only. These three lines just change the default value to your Twitch account. You can look at changing the messages in these if you want the wording slightly different, that's perfectly fine to do. But all we need to do now is add three commands for each action, or oh, three commands, one for each action. So the first one we're going to add in deaths and that's going to be for everyone to use maybe a global cooldown of once every 15 seconds for example would be good that's going to report the current deaths both for the current game that's selected under the stream so the category that you save in uh, your twitch settings and it's also going to report the total number of deaths across all games. The next one is going to be to add, so I'm going to use death plus for this one. Again, this is going to be something which you might not need to run very often, but it depends on what type of game you want. So you may want to limit the cooldown here so you don't get duplicate ads by mistake. But I'm going to leave it as is for now. Because it's something a bit more important, you might want only moderators or maybe VIPs to be able to add deaths. And just in case a death has been added by mistake, we can have a death remove function, so death minus in this case. And again, that will probably be the same permissions as the death add or death plus command that I'm using. And there we have it. We've configured the improved death counter. Now let's have a look and see how that behaves in chat. So we start off with nothing being run before on any of these commands. I'm just gonna check the deaths for the current game, which is the games and demos. And as the total death count is zero. We're going to try adding a death. Well, actually, let's try adding a couple of them. So we can see each time we're incrementing by one. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to change to a different game or different category, just chatting. And if I do a death now, I've changed category. We're seeing that there's been no deaths for just chatting and 
death count for all games is two. So again, we're going to do a death plus, which is now incremented the death count for just chatting as one, and total death count for all games is now three. I'm going to now change it back to games and demos. Going to make sure that this is still set to the two we had before. Total is the three, but let's now reduce it. You can see here now the totals are updated accordingly. At this point, we don't need to do anything else to use the death counter. But for those that may be interested, I'm going to step through and explain what each of the actions do. The first line is setting a variable called broadcaster with the streamer's name. Now it's done this way so we can always pull that value out in other parts of the code. So it makes it easier to configure. You can see here we're pulling the information from Twitch. So this is the action where you go to add action. Twitch, um, then oh, add action, Twitch, get user info for target. So that pulls the game information. So we're loading that in advance before we're running the execute code. If you go into this execute code, it's pulling in the broadcaster that we set in the top line. It pulls in game, which is from the second line. It's then going to get the current counter by looking for death plus the game. So it's going to get the, whatever the game is set to, put death before it, and it's going to load that global variable. It's then going to set an argument called death counter of what we've got. So this set argument means in the future parts of the script, sorry, the actions, we can then refer to death counter. And what we can see here in the message we send out, current death count for a game, which we've got from here, is death counter, which is from the execute code. Then we have the get global, the total death counter. If it's not being set, it gets zero. And the message total death count for all games. Now we could have those messages in one message, referring them with the different values as you want to. Death counter add is quite similar. Putting in the broadcaster name, the game information that we're going to use before we run the code. But this time we just increment current count. So current count plus plus says get the current value, add one to it. And what we do here is you have to set that value back, so death plus the game to that current value, and the death counter, which we want to, you know, we had there before. So these two lines are now new. We can then message the current game's status. It's the same as before. So current death count for the game is the death counter. What we need to do now is update the total death counter. And this is very similar to the code in the regular death counter. So it gets that global, so the default value of zero, increments it by one. We need to then get it to be able to reuse that value. And finally, we do a total death count for all games. The last action, again, is slightly different. This part in the actions here is only part that's different. We re increment by minus one, therefore reducing it by one. But the execute code is, is slightly different again. So again, we are pulling in the broadcaster name, the game, and current count. If the current count is zero, we should not decrement it. So what we're doing here is saying, just run the regular death counter action, which will just report the current state. And then it says, return false. This means don't run any further actions. 
If it isn't zero, it's going to be greater than that. Therefore, we can reduce it down by one. So current count minus minus, and like the add, define the global variable variable. So it's got the current death count and sets the death counter for reuse as before in the message. And that then wraps things up for this video. Please like and subscribe to be notified of more videos like this. If there's a topic you like covered, please do let me know in the comments or also on Discord. Check my Twitch stream to see the bot in action and for other examples. So the links to my Twitch, social media and to Strunabot can be found at vrflad.com. Additional links to others that provide Strunabot content can be found in the description too. Finally, thank you so much to Nate for making a great bot. Please do consider supporting his Patreon, which is linked from streamer.bot.